Hi guys, Christian here from Architects CIA. Welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add dimensions in Archicad. I'm going to show you how to add them manually, then I'm going to show you how to add them automatically. Let's dive in. Alright, let's dimension this plan. First thing I'm going to do is to pick the dimension tool. So under documents here, we have dimension tool. So I'm just going to click on it. And first, I'll look for the first point I want to place the dimension to. I'll take it to this edge of the wall, for example. And when it changes like this, I click. And if you see, we have a circle and a crosshair that indicates the first point. So I'll just look for the second point, say maybe somewhere here. And when I'm done, what I'm going to do is to just look for any points around here. And I'll click, double click actually. Double click. And then you just look for how far you want your, your dimension to be and click. And just like that, you have your first dimension. Now, let's say I want to add more dimensions. Say I want to dimension this, the openings. I can pick this edge, and you see that when I take it to the edge of this window, the window just becomes highlighted to show that this my dimension tool now is, um, what will I say, is identifying my window, all right? So I'll click the edge of this window, and I'll click the edge of this other window. Let's say I do it for this other window too. And I will once again double click outside and look for where to place it. All right. Now you can you might be wondering what if I want to take this dimension to the end here of this wall, right? Do I have to now draw another dimension? No. With this dimension tool, I can highlight the dimension, the dimension line, click on it, and you see this dialog box or these options will pop up here. Now you can either drag it, drag your dimension or rotate it or what have you. But what we are going to do is to insert stroke merge dimension points. Okay, we are going to select this one. And what that does is that it gives us an option to add an extra point to our dimension. So when we do that, you see that we now have another dimension here. Gabriel. Okay, another thing is this. If you can see this dimension is in meters, 1.050, that's in meters. But I want it to be in millimeters. So what am I going to do? I can either come down here to this dimension and change it from plane meter to plane millimeter. Or what I can do is I can go to options, project preferences, and dimensions. And here, when this dialog box opens, I can now change it from plane meter to plane millimeter. Now, you see we have other options for the elevation, dimension, the zone and all of that, but we're going to just use this first one. Now we can change the units. If you're in the United States or any, any country that uses fractional inches or what, whatever other dimensions you can use, but I'm going to leave it at plain millimeter. And you can also change the decimal place, but I'll leave mine at zero. With all these settings, you can just click OK. And now our dimension has changed from meter to millimeters, which is just the way I want it. All right, so let me add more dimensions to this side. Now, another cool thing this dimension tool can do is, or let me just show you one more thing. If I hold the Alt key, this my mouse pointer changes to what I'll call an eye drop, an eye drop tool. What the eye drop does is that it can help you pick the parameters of this dimension. So if I take it to a dimension and just click, it picks the parameters of that dimension line. Instead of me going back to click on the dimension tool, I can just hold the Alt key and click on my dimension line to pick the parameters. Now, another thing the dimension can do is if I just take my mouse pointer to this wall, you see that it highlights the wall, right? If I do it here, it highlights the wall. And if I make it highlighted and I click, you can see that two points have appeared in my wall to show that my dimension tool has picked the two points of my wall to be measured. I'll do it for this wall too, it picks. I'll do it for this wall too, it picks. And I'll do it for this wall. And just like that, you can measure all our species, okay? And I can also pick this edge and pick this edge and place it. All right? Now, you might be wondering, do I have to do this for the entire, you know, all the areas of the, of the building? Now, that might be a little bit stressful. So what Akika does is, give, Akika has given us an option to, automatically just dimension this building. Now, personally, I'll tell you what I personally do. I use automatic exterior dimensioning to dimension the exterior part of the building. 
Then because the interior parts is very detailed, I can now go in manually to dimension the interior of the building. So let me show you how I dimension the exterior of my building automatically. But before I do, if you are finding this video helpful so far, please just do me a favor. You can just pause this video and take one second to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. Thank you. So I'll just click on the dimension tool and do Control A to highlight all the dimensions and I'll click and I'll delete it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'll go to the marquee tool and just place the marquee tool over the entire building. Then watch what I'm going to do. I'll go to design. I'll click on wall and I'll do control A. What that does is it highlights only the wall. Again, let me show you what I did. I'll go to the marquee tool. I'll highlight the space. And if I just do control A, it's going to select the entire everything inside this marquee. But that's not what I want. I want just the walls. So because of that, I'm going to make sure the wall is highlighted. And I'll do control A. And all the walls will be highlighted. The next thing I'll do is to go to documents, annotations, automatic dimensioning, and then exterior dimension. Now this box is going to open and we are going to decide what we want our dimension to look like. Now this number one rhymes with what this one here says. That is the entire area of that face of the building. Number two says dimension external geometry. Number three, dimension structures now all of these i just leave them checked because i want everything to be dimensioned now you have the option to either dimension just the opening center or the end points i'll leave it at end points another thing you want is the spaces between the dimension lines i'll just leave mine at maybe say 800 and you want to make sure this place dimensions on four sides is checked if not when you place your dimension it's going to place it only on the side you select so i'll make sure this is checked and with that, I'll click OK. Now, next thing I'm going to do is to make sure my dimension line. So again, I'll just click and make sure this line is either vertical or horizontal. What that says is that my dimension is going to be placed vertically or horizontally, not at an angle. Now, if I take this line and just put it at 45 degrees, then when I place my dimensions, it's going to all be arranged at a 45 degree angle. But I'm going to make sure this is vertical and I'll click. Then the next thing I'll do is to decide where I want my dimension to be placed. So I'll just place it like this. Okay, so you can see that automatically my dimensions have, have been placed all around. So this first one dimension the openings, the second one dimension the spaces, and the third one dimension the geometry of that space. And then the fourth one dimension the entire place. But you might be wondering, this all the lines in this dimension, they look quite disorganized, right? So we can now go in and start to arrange this dimension to be more cleaner. So what I can do is to go back to documents. I click on dimension and I do control A to select all the dimensions. Then I can now go to the dimension settings dialog or I just do control T to open the dimension settings. Now, here is where I can make all those changes to my dimensions. I can change the color of the dimension line. I can change the color of the text. I can also change the font style and the font size. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is to change this witness line from dynamic. Right now it's on dynamic. I'm going to change it to custom heights and I'm going to make this custom heights. Now, since we made the space between our dimension line 800, I can make my custom witness line say 700 or I can still make it 800 and if I click OK now the lines have reduced so I can just highlight this one and control D and push it a little bit closer to my building so these are the things you can do to just go in and rearrange your dimensions to be a bit more presentable now I can also go and control A and open the dialog box again I can change the color of my dimension. So I want all of it to show as red. I can change it and click OK. Now, instead of going into the dialog box, you can also make a few changes to your dimensions from this settings that is just available here. So say I want to change the font size or the font style. 
from Arial to something else. I can go here and change it. I like Flux Architect, so I can use Flux Architect and change it and reduce the font size to something like one or say 1.5. So these are just the little changes you can make to your to your dimension. All right. So with your with your dimension placed externally, you can now start going into your space to dimension the inside. So I can again hold the Alt key, pick the parameters of this dimension, and then I can go in and start picking points. Say I want to dimension this side. I can start picking points to place my dimension. But you notice something. Now, if I click on this one now, you see that this witness line crosses over to the other side of the wall. I don't want it that way. I just want it to stop probably at just the edge of the wall. So I can do Control T and go back into my settings dialog. And instead of making it custom height, I can make it a sized height. So that way, it's just going to stop at the edge of the wall. So we have something like this, which I prefer better. Now I can go and dimension, say, a place like this. And again, you see that when I take it to the edge of this opening, it highlights the edge so that pretty much what the dimension is doing is to, to mark itself to the edge of this opening. So that, for example, if I take this opening now and reduce it to, say, 3 meters, the dimension is going to follow me, or let's say 1.2. The dimension is going to follow this opening wherever the opening goes. So that's one of the cool things that the dimension does. Same thing with, say, this external wall, for example. Since the, this dimension has been attached to this wall, if I want to stretch the wall, maybe I want to stretch it a little bit out here, the dimension is going to follow it. You understand? So these are just some of the good things about my dimension too. So with that, I can now pick the parameters of these new dimensions I've created. And then I'm going to start going in to dimension, you know, interior spaces just the way I want it. So that is how I dimension my exterior and interior spaces. Now, finally, another thing you can do after setting up all your dimensions. So you have the settings for exterior and the settings for interior dimensions. If you want to save these settings so that in a different project, you can have it in your template and you want to use it, what you can do is to for example, I'm going to select this interior dimension. I'm going to do Control T to open the dialog box. Then I can go to up here where we have favorites and just click. And as you can see, I already have exterior dimension is saved as a favorite. I can go to new favorites and just make this interior dimension and click OK. That way we now have interior dimension saved. All right, and I click OK. So we have interior dimension C. What that does is, let's say, for example, I want to change the settings of this one to interior dimension settings. I can just click on this line, go to Control T, and go to Favorites, and I'm going to click interior dimension, and I'll click on Apply. And when I click OK, you see that the parameters of this line, of this dimension line, will now be changed to what we already saved as a favorite. So I'll do Control Z, because that's not what I want it to be. And that's it for this video guys i hope you found this video helpful if you did please don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification so that anytime i post a video you'll be notified also please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or you have any topic you'd like me to cover and if you also want to learn more about documentation in archicad you can check some of my other videos about the layers and layer combinations and you can also check my videos on elevation tutorials that's it for this video guys thanks for watching and see you in the next one.